I love RxJS. RxJS made programming a lot more enjoyable for me. I'd spend way too much time trying to figure out why something was changing or keeping track of details that were modifying state in random places and just managing spaghetti code in general. But as soon as I started coding with RxJS, I could finally write code that was declarative, self-contained, harmless, and clearly named as, as things. And instead of, uh, you know, functions that do a lot of things and there's no good name, but I could finally have actual things that were self-contained and self-descriptive. So RxJS changed the way I program for the better and it, it made programming way more enjoyable and, and faster and safer for me. So I really like RxJS. So why do I think it needs to be replaced? Well, I already did a video about why I think signals are a good idea to have in addition to RxJS, but I didn't explain, or I didn't, I didn't really realize that we actually want a complete replacement for RxJS. But there are actually seven reasons that I want to replace RxJS with a library for signal operators. And uh, for, you know, if people have been watching for a long time what I've done, uh, I've, I posted a lot of articles and videos about why RxJS couldn't be serialized in quick and I tried to figure out how to do it and I couldn't and maybe someone still can but I don't think so because RxJS is based on callback functions and callback functions uh, unless like they're, they're it's just really all over the internals of RxJS I'm not sure maybe somebody smarter than me can figure it out but it was really hard for me to try to figure out so I've been actually working on this this library of signal operators, and it's actually going pretty well. I'm I'm able to do switch maps, and uh, I thought that would be the hardest, um, and and it is kind of difficult. But uh, you know, one you know one day I'll explain how it's working because it's kind of weird. But uh, my, yeah, my motivation are these seven reasons, um, and and the first one is that signals can be serialized, but RxJS can't. So if Angular eventually works on resumability like Quick, I still want to code reactively. I still want asynchronous reactivity and resumability at the same time. Um, I think Quick alone is enough reason to work on this. And if I do it for Quick, I might as well do it for Angular and SolidJS. Um, the solutions are going to look a little different, but, well, internally, but the APIs should be very, very similar to RxJS. Second reason is boilerplate. Um, here's, here's that. So this is just a uh this is just reactivity and it's an asynchronous relationship so rxjs is great uh it can define reactive declarative relationships like this no imperative updating of this from the outside it determines itself signals you can't do this out of the box signals are just a really basic primitive in order to do this in angular you need to convert to observables and then back to signals that's kind of a lot of boilerplate are people really going to do this for just like one operator and if they don't do it for one operator. If they start down the imperative path, as I've talked about a lot, that, that your code is inside out compared to what it would be if it were declarative, which means it's every every little bit that you write in that direction has to be refactored. So it's literally going the path of a dead end if you're going to write imperatively because uh, you have to rewrite it. You have to take a step back and then go down the declarative path from the start. So I think we need signal operators. Reduce the friction of uh, what people need to write declarative code. There should just be a debounce time that works on signals natively. So, yeah, so that's the second reason. Boilerplate. Boilerplate will lead people away from coding reactively. Um, here's another alternative that will make it easier with RxJS, but uh, to, me, to me this still isn't totally perfect for other reasons. Uh, RxJS pre prejudice. Some Angular developers have a misdirected dislike for RxJS. Surprise. They blame it for problems that were actually from Angular's past lacking interop with RxJS. So if you've used, if you use Svelte, you kind of know what I'm talking about. It's actually really nice to use RxJS in Svelte. And RxJS, it seems like RxJS itself is less difficult in Svelte because you don't have to deal with it and its API directly very often at all. Um, signals are kind of a fresh reactive start for developers who had a bad taste in their mouth from RxJS. So I want them to be able to start from signals and start thinking reactively with synchronous reactivity 
and then gradually, uh, you, you know, use a an operator, use a signal utility here or there, and uh, you know, like gradually have that reactive mindset grow and grow with signals as the the foundation. Fourth reason is inevitability. People are going to create utilities for signals for functionality that already exists in RxJS, but they might fail to see the redundancy and make something unnecessarily different. RxJS is really well thought out, and I would rather see signal utilities that are consistent with RxJS. I think it'll be easier for everybody if someone just goes ahead right now and creates these utilities in a consistent way with RxJS. Fifth reason is there are developers in SolidJS and Quick who've never used RxJS. Signal operators, even if limited, would be a good introduction to asynchronous reactivity, and they'd make learning full reactivity with RxJS easier because the API would mirror the RxJS uh, API. So even even if limited, but my goal would be to get something that's totally as capable as RxJS built on top of signals, so that SolidJS and Quick developers won't just do synchronous reactivity, but asynchronous re asynchronous reactivity over time as well. And this is kind of the big one for me. In five years, it won't matter if signals or observables came first, but reactive states are more fundamental to reactivity than reactive event streams. So new developers are gonna learn signals first. They're gonna learn computed, they're gonna learn effects, uh, hopefully not that much, but um, they're, they're gonna just be writing signals in and, and SolidJS, Angular, and Quick, and uh, some, some other frameworks too. And it just makes sense to see things from a signal first perspective because that's what develop that's what you need first so the more you can do reactively with just signals the better because you're going to be comfortable with signals so if you need to reach for this arcs.js library that's this other thing you know to do this thing that people say is good the declarative code for async code uh, you, you might be like well i actually could just do an effect here and write to this signal over here after uh, timeout and you know code from scratch these reactive utilities but in an imperative manner and coupled to your business logic as well so nothing about that is great so it'd be just nice if there was a signal first approach to asynchronous reactivity as well you know if it's possible i'm working on it but we'll see and then lastly nerdiness i'm interested in the similarities between arcs operators custom react hooks and custom signals what does it actually look like to build reactive pipelines on top of a new primitive? I, I this, These were some of the first videos I did on, on, on YouTube. Um, I explored SolidJS, and first thing I did was I tried to see if I could create a debounce time uh, custom signal so that it could be declarative but with no, R, no RxJS, because I knew that React hooks could be done this way too. So it's just a fun, it's a fun thing for me to try to do. It's a challenge. Can I rewrite RxJS operators on top of signals? This is actually extremely fun. So, but with all that said, there's no reason to convert perfectly good reactive RxJS to signals right now, unless it's like synchronous reactivity and it's gonna make it way easier. Like I saw somebody, I think someone may have replied to this or one of my recent tweets. They said that uh, that they had converted some, like they got rid of like eight RxJS operators. I was like, whoa, you've got like debounce time there, you have uh, one other asynchronous one, like what's your replacement for those? Do like, what are you doing in signals to keep your code declarative? Are you really writing it in an imperative way? This is kind of what I was afraid of, but actually the debounce time was to get rid of the, uh, the glitches that you get from combined latest when each input updates synchronously. So, so it, it wasn't meant to be for asynchronous reactivity. And so you got to get rid of with just signals and computed, like signal and computer, those two things. You get rid of like seven ArcGIS operators from your code. That is a huge simplification. But uh, for for code that actually is asynchronous, uh, you you probably want to just keep it ArcGIS so that you can keep your reactive code. Um, and you can you can keep that forever. I just you know I just know that some people are already doing it, and I think you should wait if it's you know asynchronous reactivity. You're you're unwriting to imperative uh, code. Um, and ArcGIS can be used inside Quick. It just it's just not fully integrated into resumability. So that's something that's kind of unfortunate. Uh, but you know, clean code I think is the most important thing. I think resumability is really epic. But 
clean code, you know, developer productivity is where most of the value is. So write your code clean, code declaratively, and eventually I think signals might be the platform for all reactive code because of these reasons. So yeah, if you're interested in me in, in what I'm doing, follow, follow me on Twitter and uh, I'll, yeah, I'll po post a link to that in the description and yep, that's, that's it. That's why I think that we should replace RxJS with signals, signal operators.